Okay, uh, good day to everyone. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of our discussion on time value of money. So, in our previous uh, video, we already learned the concepts of your future value and uh, present value for lump sum payments or single payments and for annuities, okay, meaning periodic payments. So, we are now going to proceed with the relationship or presentation of relationships of time value of money. So, let us just uh, have the slides. Okay, so basically, um, we need to understand that your time value of money or your future value and present values are actually related to each other. Okay, and um, if you are going to talk about uh, reversing, okay, the, reversing the computations, basically, if you are looking for an amount in the future and depend or determining how much you are supposed to invest right now or today in order for you to get that future amount then what you're going to do is actually to compute for the present value so you're going to work back uh, if you have the money right now and you want to know how much it will be in the future then that's going to be a future value computation so that's basically how it works so the basic formula that we already have is the present value of a certain uh, amount is equal to the cash flows that you're going to have multiplied by the present value factor and if you're going to look for the future value you're going to get the cash flows that you have or that you're going to be providing or that you're going to be uh, spending multiplied by the future value factor and you're going to get the uh, future value so if you're going to get or if you're going to derive the formula then basically, if you want to determine how much cash flows you're, you're supposed to shell out in order for you to achieve a certain amount in the future or to determine a certain amount in the present okay, or in the current period, then you are simply going to uh, get the formula or derive the formula, which means that your cash flow now is going to be computed by getting the present value divided by the present value factor or the future value divided by the future value factor so let's try to have this particular example okay so if uh, assuming that there is a 10 percent interest rate and after four years you will have an amount of four thousand six hundred forty one okay the question there is how much are you going to invest okay on an annual basis if you are going to or if you want to receive this particular amount. So what we are trying to look for now is the annuity payment or the uh, cash flow. Okay. So again, by deriving the formula, your annuity or your cash flow will be equal to the future value divided by the future value factor. Okay. So meaning, if your future value is 4,641 and using the 10% interest rate in four years, you can actually determine that your future value factor is 4.4641. Uh, this, is, this, is, this was actually discussed already, how you can compute that using your calculator. Then, you can compute that you need to shell out or you need to invest 1,000 every year, okay, starting at the end of the year, and then it is going to grow to... Uh, 4,641 at the end of 4 years. So to give an additional example, basically you can prepare a table or, or an amortization table wherein at the end of each year, you are going to have cash flows of 1,000 each and it's going to earn a 10% interest every year. Okay? Of course, there will be no interest in year 1 because you are going to give the cash flow at the end of the year. So Basically, at the end of year 1, you only have 1,000. Okay? At the, for year 2, your 1,000 there will earn 10% and you are going to add another 1,000. So, at the end of year 2, you already have 2,100 there. This amount will earn another 10% in the third year plus the cash flow that you will be giving or the amount that you're going to invest. This will be your amount. And then this will also earn another 10% plus your additional cash flow and this will be your final amount. So basically, using the same formula that you have in the previous slide, this one, 
you can actually see that the the amount that you want 4641 is the same as doing this okay or basically making an amortization table okay so similarly you can also determine your present value okay uh, before we move on please take note that this is an incorrect amount this is supposed to be ten thousand dollars only not one hundred thousand dollars okay so now we are going to determine um the annuity okay if we are going to um, amortize a ten thousand uh, dollar loan let's say for example or a ten thousand dollar amount and we're going to liquidate that or pay that over a period of uh, four four years at an interest rate of six percent okay so meaning currently you have ten thousand dollars of loan okay and you're going to pay that off okay so what are you going to do so again using the same formula your annuity or your your cash flow will be computed by getting the present value which is already given at ten thousand take note that one hundred thousand ten thousand and dividing it by the present value of an annuity using uh, the same computation that we did last time okay so if you cannot remember basically what we do here is to get the present value annuity so let me uh, get my calculator again and let us simply illustrate how we can get uh, this present value factor so first is we get the present value uh, using the lump sum so that's going to be 1.06 and then click divide twice and then enter for four periods so when i click the first enter or the first equal sign that's not yet the first period because this is one okay which means that this is not yet the first period so we click uh, we press enter four times one two three four so this is the present value lump sum we are going to get the annuity so to uh, continue with the computation that's going to be uh, we're going to add this to our memory and then 1 minus memory recall equal sign divided by 0 0.06 and we will get 3.4651 or basically 3.465 if we're going to round it off to 3 decimal places and we will get this factor so now we are simply going to divide 10,000 again uh, let us highlight let us reiterate that this is an incorrect amount so I'll just remove I'll just remove the excess zero here wait uh, for a while let's just remove the excess zero here okay so that's only 10,000 okay <laughs> okay so anyway that's 10,000 divided by 3.465 and you will get the cash flow of 2,886 what does that mean it means that you are going to if you want to pay off a, an existing 10,000 debt having a 6% interest you're going to need to pay 2,886 every year okay for additional computation this is actually how it's going to be done so this is the computation that is already existing and this is a modification okay so if the carrying value of the loan or of the liability is ten thousand, and your cash flows every year is going to be 2886 assuming that it is going to earn an interest of 600 then uh, same computation this amount plus the interest minus the cash flow this will be the amount at the end of year one Following the same computation, this will be the amount at year 2, year 3, and then at year 4, it will become 0. So meaning, uh, at the end of uh, 4 years, your loan will al already be paid up if you are going to pay this cash flow. Okay, based on our present value computation uh, provided in this slide. Okay, so that's basically how it is. So moving on. Uh, let's continue the discussion of your uh, present value computations okay, uh, by having another example. Okay? So basically, um, this uh, computation is going to give us an idea of how much is the total payment that we are going to make. Okay? So the same computation, 
if you are going to repay a loan for 20 years and it carries an interest of 8%, how much are you supposed to pay? Okay? So using the same formula, that's going to be 40,000 divided by 9.818. The question is, how did we get 9.818? Again, we are going to make the computation for the present value. So I hope you can remember, but if you cannot, let us just do this, okay? So let's go first with, uh, bear with us because the computation will take 20 periods. So 1.08, divide twice, and then click enter or equal sign 20 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay? So this amount will be placed to our memory. And then 1 minus memory recall. Oops. Wait, that's wrong, that's wrong, wait. Okay, so again, 1.08, divide, divide twice. Okay, we forgot to clear the memory a while ago, that's why there's a problem. Okay, then enter, then 20 years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then add that to memory. Okay, and then 1 minus memory recall equal sign divided by 0 0.08 so I'm simply following the formula and that's 9.818 so that's the same amount here okay so meaning going back to our slide um, if we if we want to pay up a 40,000 debt for 20 years okay with wherein there is an 8% interest then we need to uh, pay 4074 every year okay so if you're going to look for the total payments okay that's basically this cash flow multiplied by 20 years and this is going to be your total cash flow okay uh, minus the principal amount which is 40,000 then the amount that you paid in relation to interest is actually 41,480 okay so that is how this computation works out so this computation is uh, relevant if you want to determine number one your total payments and number two the total interest payments in relation to your loan okay so you can also use your amortization table similar to what we were providing a while ago but since uh, it will take 20 years uh, uh, we are not going to uh, give the details for the entire 20 years this is just a partial amortization for three years Okay, considering that uh, you are going to have annual payments and this will be the interest. So that's basically uh, the concept there. Okay, so to review, uh, these are the various uh, formulas that we have. We have the future value and present value for single amounts and annuity. And then we have the uh, computations for the annuity equaling to future value and annuity equaling to present value. Okay, so we are now going to um, consider the concepts of uh, yield, okay? Me meaning we are going to determine how much um, is going to be the present value okay, of a single amount using the same computation, assuming that you already have the present value and the uh, future values. Okay? So meaning we are again determining the formula. Okay? we are deriving the formula using the original formula. Okay, so basically, if this will become your amount, then I am going to transfer the future value to the other side, then the formula will be, if I want to get the factor, or the future val present value or future value factor, I simply need to get the present value divided by the cash flow. Okay, or the present value divided by the future value. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Okay, so this is simply an example of how you can derive the present value factor okay, by utilizing the, deriv the derivation of your formula. Okay. But again, um, you can also do another approach which is, which is interpolation. Okay. So again, this is uh, the example of your interpolation. So basically, in the interpolation process, uh, is going to give you an idea of um, 
how you are going to get an amount which is in between two particular present values. So, for purposes of financial accounting, we already learned how to interpolate. Okay? However, for purposes of financial management, we are going to forego this because in actuality, there is a software that is going to be used for you to compute this. Okay? And of course, in the assumption that you already know financial accounting, um, this is also uh, going to be a normal thing for you later on using your financial accounting skills. So, we're not going to repeat this anymore. Okay. So, similarly, if you have a present value of an annuity, okay, if you want to determine how much is your, or what will be your factor, then what you're going to do is to do the same derivation of formula. That's going to be the factor is equal to your present value annuity divided by the annuity or the cash flow. So in this example, assuming you have 10,000 and the annual cash flow is 1,490, then the expected present value factor is 6.710. So the thing there is the question, what is the interest rate relating to this one? Okay. So it's either you do trial and error or you can also uh, do interpolation. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's basically what you're going to do. Okay. So moving on. Uh, what are your special considerations in time value of money okay? or that analysis of your time value? So first is, um, there are certain contractual agreements that will require you to compute semi-annual, quarterly, or monthly. Okay? So meaning instead of using annual, annual rates, you need to get your semi-annual, quarterly, or monthly rates. Okay? So to, uh, to give an idea, so basically this is going to be the effect. So, assuming the interest rate is actually 10%. Okay? So, if the interest rate is 10% on an annual basis, what if the computations require you to compute semi-annual, quarterly, or monthly? So, for semi-annual, you simply divide this by 2. And your semi-annual rate is already 5%. For quarterly, the 10% will be divided by 4 because you have 4 quarters in 1 year and your rate is already 2.5. For monthly, that's going to be 10% divided by 12 months. Okay, so that's, this is going to be 0.83% uh, okay, per, uh, per uh, month. Okay, if we're going to make a compounding periods monthly. Okay, and as a result, your uh, years or your period will also increase. Okay, so it's going to be the opposite. So if the original period is 10 years, and that is a semi-annual compounding, then multiply it by 2, your period will become 20 periods. Okay? Because there will be 2 amortizations per year. If you have 10 years and there is a, a quarterly compounding, then that's going to be multiplied by 4, and you will have 40 compounding periods because there will be 4 amortizations per year. If you have 10 years and you're going to have 12 amortizations per year, then that's going to be 120 periods. So that's basically how it works. Okay, I hope you still remember uh, that concept in your financial accounting. Okay, so moving on, we have these particular cases. And let's try to uh, simply understand okay, how it works. Okay, so case one, determine the future value of a $1,000 investment after five years at 8% annual interest compounded semi-annually. Okay, so if the semi-annually, your 5 years will become 10 periods and your 8% will become 4%. Okay, so how are we going to get that value? So let us try to compute uh, the factor because this, this is basically our consideration there. So this is going to be a one-time investment, okay, uh, good for 5 years or 10 periods. So let's bring out our calculator. So what are we going to do there? So let's clear first everything. So we are now going to have 1.04. Okay, not 8% because that's semi-annual. So 1.04 and then this is future value. So we will click times or the multiplication function twice. Okay, so we will start immediately counting. This is already after one year. So we will count 
um, nine more periods. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? Plus one, ten. Okay? So, this is already our um, future value factor. So, 1.4802. So, that's basically the same as 1.48. So, again, let's repeat for purposes of understanding it better. We are not going to use 1.08 because there is a semi-annual compounding. Instead, we are going to use 1.04. Okay? And our period will become, instead of 5 years or 5 periods, it will become 10 periods. So, click the multiplication function twice. This will be the first year. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so 10 periods. That's the amount. Again, we, we skip counting 1 because 1.04 is already good for 1 year. Okay? Next, if we have this particular example, determine the present value of 20 quarterly payments of 2,000 uh, each to be received over the next 5 years, okay, where i is equal to 8%. So, basically, we do not we do not have any problem there. Okay? If the interest rate is 1% per annum, okay, or sorry, 8% per annum, okay, and the period is going to be 20 quarterly payments, okay, then, meaning our interest rate here will not be, uh, will not be 8%. It's going to be Wait, why is it that this is 20%? It said there 8%. So I think this is an error. Okay. Because based on the oh okay. So this is the uh, this is the error, not um so basically based on our information, if that's five years, okay, so five years multiplied by four because that's quarterly, that's twenty periods. 8% divided by 4 because our 8% is going to be subdivided into 4 quarterly payments, that's 2%. Okay, so what we're going to do is to determine the present value factor using uh, the period 20 years, or to, sorry, 20 periods and 2%. And this is going to be a quarterly payment, so we are talking about annuity. Okay, so let's compute. So that's 1.02. Divide, divide, and then we're going to have 20 periods. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, put this to memory. And then 1 minus memory recall, equal sign, divided by 0 0.02. So that's 16.3514. So that's the same as 16.351. So just remember that formula that we presented in the previous video. Okay. So, next concern will be the pattern of payment. The pattern of payment pertains to um, what will be or is are we going to receive the payment on an annual basis? Is it a one-time basis? Is it going to be an uh, ordinary annuity? So, basically, that's uh, the concept of pattern of payment. So, the present value or future value of your investment or of your loan will be dependent on the pattern of the payment that you're going to receive or the pattern of payment that you're going to have. Therefore, you need to make sure that you know the pattern because that will be the basis of the computation of the present value. Okay? So, basically, it's like this. So, if you have an annual uh, discount rate of 8% and your cash flow is going to be 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 for a different period, okay, then how are you going to determine the present value? Okay, so again, since it is already given that the discount rate is 8% and we are looking for the present value, then 1.08, and then click divide twice, and then enter, then 1. So that's one year. So that for a payment after one year, then that's going to be 0 0.925 or 0 0.926. Click enter again. This will be your uh, present value factor for the second year. Another enter. This will be your present value factor for third year. So that's basically how you are going to do that. And then you multiply it by the cash flow and you will get the total present value. 
Okay, so we go to our last concern which is your deferred annuity. So deferred annuity is talking about an annuity payment that is going to be deferred, meaning it is not going to be received immediately during the first year. Meaning it could be received in the uh, third year, fourth year, fifth year, okay, that's why it's called deferred. Okay, so as an example, if uh, you have a particular uh, payment and the annuity of $1,000 is paid at the end of each year from the 4th through the 8th year, then meaning if this is the present, okay, you are not going to receive payment not until the 4th year. So meaning there will be zero cash flows for year 1, year 2, and year 3, but there will be a 1,000 payment for the next 5 years starting on the 4th year. So this is going to be the structure of your cash flow. Okay, so um, there is a an example given here. Okay, but the, I do not like this kind of computation because it only makes it complicated. The concept here is uh, you are going to compute uh, two present values. Okay, uh, to simplify things, you can simply do this. Okay, so you are simply going to get the cash flow. So if you are going to receive 1,000 each for year 4, year 5, year 6, year 7, and year 8, and the interest rate is 8%, then you simply compute for the present value factor using the normal uh, present value computation. So where did we get these present value factors? Okay, We simply go back to our calculator and type 1.08 and click divide twice, and then click enter. Okay, we are going to compute for the present value factors starting with year 4. So if I click enter 4 times, that is the first present value. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 0 0.7350 or 0 0.74, that's the present value of the amount that we will receive in year 4. This is the present value of the amount we will receive in year 5, year 6 year 7, year 8. Okay? And then you simply multiply the factor by the cash flow and you will get the total amount of present value. So, 3,169.54 is basically the same as 3,170. Okay? So, this is just it. That was just rounded off. That's why there is a difference. But basically, that's how you compute it. Okay? That's easier. Okay? So, there is another approach. Okay, again, I do not like this approach because it's basically complicated. What, what they wanted you to do is to compute first the total present value annuity for 8 years and then compute for the present value for 3 years and then deduct the... Uh, why 3 years, by the way? Because you are not going to receive cash flows for the, next, for the first 3 years. So, we are going to deduct that from the total present value. And you will get the present value and with the four, uh, the remaining four years. So you will get the same answer, but this is more complicated. Um, the process that we did in the previous slide is actually more. Um, wait, present it back. So it's actually better if we're going to do it on a straightforward computation. However, if you want to or if you prefer doing this. You can still practice that and you can still get the same answer. Okay. So, it's actually the same. Okay. So, that's the end of our uh, presentation. Uh, for uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have the assessment already after this. Thank you.